Hello everyone and welcome again okay, in one of our new lessons. We continue today with our course of punctuation and we'll try to tackle okay, another important punctuation mark. Let me assume it's the most important mark comparing to all the other marks okay, in English, which is the comma. Now, as you know, the comma is the widely used mark, right? And many factors, okay, uh, make it, okay, the top mark comparing to all the other, okay, marks. Uh, it's frequent use, all right. Uh, it's multiple cases, okay, with the English sentence, all right. And it's important role also in uh, ordering, okay, our ideas within the English sentence. So today we'll try to cover, okay. Uh, the rules which govern the use of the comma, right? And we'll see how we should place it correctly within the English sentence, okay? Because we have a common rule about the comma which says, okay, when there is a rule, we we'll put a comma, otherwise, we don't put any comma. So let's try to highlight, okay, the different rules, okay, about how to use this essential mark. We'll start first by uh, the different cases okay, we already saw in our previous lessons, especially in the lesson of types of sentences. Right, types of sentences. So, number one. If you remember, okay, when we studied okay, the second type of sentences, which is the compound sentence, we said that, okay, the compound sentence is what? Is two or more independent clauses joined, okay, either by semicolon or conjunctive adverbs or conjunctions of coordination. And we said that if you join two or more independent clauses with a conjunction of coordination or fanboys, you must always put a comma before them, before them. So the first use, okay, is what we write here, we put a comma before, right, conjunctions of coordination. I need here fun boys, of course, and but or and so on. When they join two or even more, okay, independent or main. Clauses, main clauses. Example. We find this case mainly with the compound sentence and also the compound complex sentence. Clear. Uh, he is ill. So, comma. So, he won't come. Here I have this, okay, coordination of coordination, okay, which joins the two independent clauses. It's always, okay, preceded by a comma, by a comma. Good. Also, we have second case, which concerns the same types of sentences. Okay, but this time with what we call conjunctive adverbs. These also they join two independent clauses, but in this case, okay, we put the comma after them. After them. So, right here, 
after conjunctive adverbs clear when they join always okay independent huh? close for example we write he is ill right so here is my conjunctive adverb consequently or as a consequence as a result uh, uh, however for contrast uh, uh, in addition for uh, addition clear nonetheless uh, moreover furthermore and so on clear so here we put before them semicolon and after them our mark which is the comma the comma is always placed after the conjunctive adverb when they join okay independent clauses independent clauses all right he is ill consequently he won't come he won't come he won't come also we have seen in our lesson or previous lesson another two cases which concern also okay uh, the other types of sentences mainly the complex one we said that okay we can form a complex sentence uh, by joining only one independent clause to one or more dependent clauses which start either with uh, a conjunction of subordination relative or relative pronoun or adverb or the markers of the noun clause now in case okay we have uh, a sentence which starts with uh, what a clause which starts also with a conjunction of subordination or simply we say whenever we start a sentence with uh, an adverbial clause clear whenever we start a sentence with uh, an adverbial clause it's the clause which starts with a conjunction of subordination we must always separate this clause okay and put after it a comma right to separate it from the rest of the sentence clear so we write here um, use the comma to separate or set off set off and adverbial and it's always dependent of course dependent right uh yeah, I think, but uh, dependent clause which starts with a conjunction of subordination like uh, the con conjunctions of uh, subordination of course because as since result so that such that clear uh, contrast of the, the condition if and so on and less for time uh, for a condition also before after and so on clear so of subordination which part of the so we are here Instead of an adverbial, huh? I mean dependent clause which starts with conjunction of huh? uh, subordination, when it comes at the beginning, at the beginning 
of a sentence. Example, simply, if you work hard, you will succeed. Or well, clear, and so on. So here, I have this first clause, okay, which starts with a conjunction of subordination, of condition if, or with because, or with as, or with the uh, under and so on. So here it is an adobe clause. When it comes at the beginning, right, of a sentence, I must always separate it, okay, from the other sentence, the rest of the sentence, by a comma, like this, clear, like this. But in case this, uh, for example, clause comes in, in, uh, after in the, second, in the second position, inside, we don't put any comma before if. We have seen this before already. Clear. So always, whenever we start sentence with an adverbial clause that starts with a conjunction of subordination, I must always set it off by comma. By comma. Good. Also, we have another case which concerns always the dependent clauses. And this time we will uh, deal with the, okay, the adjective clause. We said the adjective clause is what? Is a relative clause which starts with a relative pronoun who, who, which, that, and whose, or adverb like when and where. All right. And we have two types we have restrictive and non restrictive. We said if this relative clause gives essential information, it is restricted, it is uh, important, but in case it gives only extra information, here it is non-restricted, and we must set it off with a comma or commas, clear, we must separate always, okay, the non-restricted and adjective and relative clause with a comma or commas. Clear. So we write here to set off set of non restricted or non defining clear clause or clauses in a sentence. In a sentence. Example, for example, I write, I read Hamlet which is a famous play. A famous play. So here, I read Hamlet huh, is my independent clause, uh, which is a famous play. Here is my what second clause, which starts with relative pronoun. Okay, and as it gives only extra information about the noun it refers to. Here I must put a comma after it. Sorry, comma before it. It means I must always separate okay, this non-restrictive clause with a comma. If it's at the end, I put a comma before the, the relative pronoun. If it's in the middle, for example, like this, example, uh, Ali, Ali, huh? Is fair is my name is 
my neighbor is my neighbor. Here also I have another what adjective and the non restrictive clause which gives me extra information about Ali, about only his head, something extra clear and doesn't restrict the noun to verse 2 whose hair is fair here it is non restricted clause so I must separate it with two commas as it is placed in the middle of a sentence clear of a sentence alright so these are uh, the first four cases okay or rules which govern the use of the comma we have already seen them in our previous lesson there are still okay many other cases which are uh, going to be highlighted in this lesson. Just follow please. Now the important and also commonly used case of the comma concerns what we call introductory words or phrases. It means whenever we start uh, a sentence, sometimes we use uh, certain words okay, or phrases to introduce okay, this sentence. For example, like first, firstly, huh? uh, in addition, also, next, uh, moreover, and this okay, kind of sequences. Always we should set off or separate these elements and put after them a comma. Clear? So we write number four, the fourth rule or case of the use of the comma. When, okay, to set off, okay, in, sorry, introductory. Words or phrases like first at the beginning, okay, of sentences, huh? uh, firstly, also these four words. Also, we have, in fact, four phrases clear. Uh, last but not least, in conclusion, on the other hand, all these when they come at the beginning of a the sentence, they should be followed by a comma. Okay, good. We have also another important case when we should use the comma, not the comma here. All right. It concerns what we call listing, when we list, right? It means when we mention, okay, three or more elements in succession, right? Or items in succession, one after the other, we have to set off these elements or these items, okay, using commands, using commands. Now, these items can be words, nouns, verbs, and so on, clear? or phrases, or even clauses. Let's see some examples now. So, two sets of huh? three or more items or elements when listing. Uh, we said here three because in case we have only two, there is no need to use any command. For example, I met Ahmed and Ali. Here, no command is used. Clear. But I met Ahmed, comma, Ali, right, and Rashid. Here, when we list, we use okay, the comma. So, one listing, to top three or more items, one listing. Whether okay, they are words, example, 
example, I write uh, she likes uh, green, yellow, right, blue, and white colors. White colors. Clear and white colors. Or phrases. Example. For instance. I study in all places without any problem at how in the classroom huh? and uh, for example okay in the yard and in the yard in the yard behind the house. Here also I have listed okay three phrases at home in the classroom and in the yard and I put a comma okay and this comma is called also the listing comma the listing comma right also I have a case of clauses or clauses example uh, I am reading. Law must contain, as you know, subject and verb. Huh? He is exercising. Yes. Uh, and she is. Cooking. She is cooking. So here is okay. Also, with this list of clauses, I use my comma to separate. Okay, my clauses. Okay, my clauses. Now, as you see here, when I list three or more items, okay, I put the comma always. Okay, between these items, but when I reach and or or clear or here okay i don't use any comma this is of course according to the british okay norms of punctuation because the british always okay or usually they don't put any comma before end all right unlike the americans which always put a comma here clear so in case you find a comma before end it's not wrong it's only okay the American okay uh, variation of because I think situation okay but as we are still beginners okay and novice as they always say you must always stick huh, to the basic rules of punctuation according to the British norms British norms and the British usually okay don't put a comma before end or or when listing when listing right. Go. Uh, also, we have another important case for the use of the comma number six this time. Number six, which concerns also what we call parenthetical expressions. Huh? Parenthetical expressions. Now these are expressions, okay, which uh, interrupt, okay, or come in the middle of a sentence, as if they are placed between parentheses. So instead of putting them, all right, between parentheses, we put them between two commas, two commas. For example, we have, uh, on the other hand, uh, for example, uh, for example, 
for, inst for instance, huh? uh, in addition, right, and so on. So right here, it's also used to set off, All right, parenthetical expressions. Huh? Like what? Uh, in addition, huh? for example, for instance, uh, also we have. Uh, on the other hand, on the other hand, right, and many other examples. Okay, of these parallel expressions. All right. So here, these you may, uh, for example, uh, notice that some of them, okay, are used as uh, conjunctive adverbs, like in addition here, but these. When they come, listen, in the middle of a sentence to join a clause, right, with, for example, a phrase, with a word, and so on, we put them here between two commas. Example, I write. Uh, he is poor and homeless. And how does in addition uh, in addition example I write it now uh, hungry 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 so here in this case, I put okay as if here okay we have an expression that should be placed okay between two parentheses. So here I use two commas to show this expression. In addition, is what is only a uh, parenthetical expression. Clear uh, something which is inserted. Okay, surprisingly, okay by uh, the speaker or the writer. Clear to interrupt, interrupt the flow of. The sentence, clear, all the sentence. And as you hear, we have a clause joined not to a clause but to what? To a word or a phrase, clear, or a phrase, word or a phrase. Good. Also, we have the case, number seven, which concerns mind or weak. Okay, less emphatic. Interjections like oh, huh? example, like wow, here, yeah. all right, and so on. So sometimes writers use after them commas. Why to show that here, okay, the expression of feelings or emotions is not strong because, in case it's strong, they put it. And exclamation mark. Right. But with the comma after them, here it's we call it uh, mild, okay, interjection or less emphatic. It means weak expression of feelings or emotions. Clear. Go. Now we move on to our case number eight. Case number eight, 
Ok, consoles. Direct speech. Right. As you know, that any direct speech consists of two main parts. We have what we call the reporting verb and the reported clause. So, we separate these two elements using or by using a comma. A comma. So we write here, number eight, two set of the reporting verb from the coded huh? uh, clause, for example, the right clause, or in the phrase expression, clear to the expression, to set off a party verb from the coded uh, cause, clause, or expression. Expression in direct act speech. Here we have two cases. When you start with the reporting verb, I write he said clear. For example, here you can put either comma or comma. He said. Example. Okay. Clear. Okay. Or in case you start with the coaching, okay, clause or expression, okay, you also should put a comma before you close the quotation box, then you add your reporting verb. Okay, reporting verb. I write, I am tired, tired, here, I put a comma, I close my code, then I write, he said, he said, he said. So here, we have this, okay, rule or case in which we should set off, okay. Uh, the reporting verb from the coded clause expression using our comma. All right, go. Also, another case which concerns addresses or parts of an address. Okay, parts of an address to set of parts of an address. Example, uh, I live in, I don't know, uh, uh, 44 Road, comma, Wessex. Street, example, another comma. Huh? Uh, I don't know. Harold Avenue, comma, Bisma, or London. Clear. London, not the London here. Right? London. 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 Here we have the road, here the street, and here the city. We separate these items or parts of an address. Okay, using commas. Using commas. Also the same case. Okay, with parts of geographical areas. Geographical areas, especially okay. Uh, for example, uh, village and city. It belongs to uh, city and country. Okay, it belongs to right. Number eight or sorry ten. Two 
set of also parts of geographical areas. Example, I have visited uh, the now uh, Delhi, India, right? I have visited. Huh? Example, city of Delhi in India. Example here, I have separated okay the city from the country it belongs to. Okay, it belongs to right. For example, Los Angeles, comma right, and Miami, huh? And so on and so forth, and so on and so forth. Uh, another important case also which concerns letters. Okay, letters. Here it's number eleven. Right. We have in letters what we call salutations at the beginning. Okay. And at the end, at the bottom, we have closings. Closings. Right. So the British or the English always put at the end of both salutations and closings a comma. So here they is the okay, the task for us. Clear. So after What? Salutations. Clear. Right. Example. Dear. Sir. In both types of letters, huh? Dear sir. Or dear. Ali, for instance. Dearly. Right, always we put a comma after any letter salutation. And also after patients and closings. Example Best wishes for informed letters and Yours, for example, faithfully in uh, business or formal letters. In both cases, we put after them always a comma. Okay, this is for the British norms of punctuation. Clear punctuation. Now, uh, just uh, to uh, refer to this notion only as a remark, the Americans. Difference, difference between formal letters and informal letters when it comes to citations. If the letter is a friendly letter, then Ali, then Ahmed, and so on, they're my best friend, and so on, okay, they put a comma. But in case, okay, the letter is business letter, okay, official or formal letter, the Americans put a colon, okay, a colon after the citation. But for the closings, they also agree with the British in putting the comma, okay, in all types of closings, right? But the British, as you see, okay, here they maintain a uh, simple way of punctuation. They always put a comma after both salutations as well as closings of any type of any letter. Clear? Of any letter. Good. Also, we have the case of what we call Number 12, appositives to set of appositives. Appositives. What are these appositives? Now, these are phrases, okay, which come in a sentence, usually in the middle of a sentence. To identify, okay, another noun before them. Clear. There are phrases 
which identify, okay, now, now before that, we write Obama or John Washington, the ex American president, All right? Uh, for example, died in 1991, example, or uh, 1873. Uh, Clear, for example, we write here. Example. George Washington the ex president or American president, American president. I can't see this better. Example, right here. Or Abraham Lincoln, simply an example. Abraham huh? uh, Lincoln, for instance. An X. American President okay. died in uh, the eighty for example eighties. Clear in the eighteen eighties. Right, so here Abraham Lincoln is now, and here I have this phrase, an ex-American president, which comes to identify, okay, this noun before it, right, it's only, as you see here, noun phrase, so this noun phrase is called an appositive, because it comes to identify, okay, a noun before it, clear, so here, this appositive we place between two commas, between two commas. Two commas, as you see here. Clear. Two commas. Right. And this apostrophe is another type of phrase in English. It's another type of phrases. Okay. In addition to the types we saw together. Okay. But uh, the last case. Okay. In this lesson concerns. Okay. Dates. And here we need to clarify. Okay. How to use. The comma with dates. We have two ways of writing the date in English. We have the American way and the British way. Clear. Now the Americans, US. Right. They start with what? They start with the month, the day, and the year. Example, they write. June huh? the 13th, right? Example 2017. And the Americans always what? When they write in this way, they set off the year by a comma, right? By a comma. So the year in the American way of writing the date. Is always set off by a comma, right? When the date is mentioned. But for example, in case we write only uh, he uh, do not died in June, huh? Huh? 2017. Here the Americans don't put any comma. So in case all the elements of the date are mentioned, we always okay separate the date right with a comma for the Americans. But for the British, in fact, it's easier because they have a kind of logical order of the elements of the date, and therefore they use no comma. Okay, in the date, they start with the day, with the day, thirteen, thirteenth of June. Right. 2017. 17. 
and we, of course, in our lesson, we adopt okay, the British rule and way of writing the date. So, whenever you write date like this, you mustn't put any comma. All right. But in case you find, okay, this way of writing with a comma to separate the date, it's only, okay, an American version, okay, of the date. It's not a mistake, not a problem. Clear. But for us, this is, okay, what we should adopt and use in our writing from now on. Clear from now on, because we have always to stick to the basic rules, okay, of punctuation, which are set mainly and primarily by the British, clear, where the language uh, originally, okay, uh, originated, right, originated. Go. Now, like this, we have finished or nearly covered, okay, uh, almost all the rules and the cases in which we use the comma, okay, I repeat, the comma is the most important uh, punctuation mark, but we should always pay to it, okay, most of our attention, Right, with regard to all the elements we saw in this lesson, right, and you must never ignore its value and importance. Uh, we'll try to accompany our lesson with, them. okay, uh, further practice, okay, and maybe remarks, okay, to intensify and reinforce our understanding. Thanks so much and see you in another lesson and another video. Good luck.